The apparent content of Farmer Earl is not shared by young blacks in nearby Reading, many of whom feel alienated and restricted by the places they work, live and play. This is one of the few places they can call their own, the Central Club run by social worker Martin Varley. Well, the Central Club is a drop-in centre right in the heart of the centre of town and we cater for young people who find themselves in the centre of town. We're not a youth club with a membership. Um, we're open to any youngster who comes through the door. The majority of users are black youngsters. Perhaps this is because we're open during the day. Many of them are running and many of them have found no facility that meets their particular needs within the town, within the ordinary youth club set up. Well, we do offer a certain number of recreational um, facilities, but sometimes I wonder whether we're not covering up the real priorities by doing this, because although it gives them somewhere to go rather than hanging around the shopping centre, the resources are so small, in fact, within this centre that we can't fully cater for some of the needs that, that become apparent to us. They have set up a football team of their own, which is very successful and entirely due to their own efforts, uh, with help from myself and others. <laughs> I think one of the reasons that we find this centre is used by black youngsters is because they feel it is a place of their own. I think it's absolutely essential that they do have a place where they can feel at home and where they can actually do their own thing, whatever it be. Well, the music is all part of the identity thing. It's all part of being able to do something which you feel is something which is part of yourself. Um, with reggae in particular, um, West Indians who are into reggae, play reggae and listen to reggae can see it as their own way of expressing what they feel. Yeah, well to me, um, the music is important because it's um, created out of the African roots. It gives people an opportunity to sort of get together and associate and enjoy themselves in the uh, in the environment they like, in the environment they like most. But music means noise, loud noise, and this has led to confrontation with authority. First there were restrictions, now the lease has run out and the club is to be demolished for property development. We should have a, a club in Reading. Uh, whereas you can do various activities, not, uh, not only music, because, because I think there's lots of other important things apart from music. But when it closes, I, you know, I think there's going to be more conflict, conflict with the police because people have nowhere else to go. If music is one victim, so too is this Saturday morning school run at the club by a black community group called Apollo. We set the school up in 1976 because parents, together with members of the Apollo, thought that the children at school were not getting the attention they needed. The children enjoy coming to the school mainly because they get more attention and we try to make the work as interesting as possible. We try to keep the ratio of teacher to child one to one and we never go above three. When they go to school, they have white books. All the children are always white. If they ever see anything black, normally it's black th kid doing the wrong thing, or they look at black being bad and white being good. And so we wanted to show them that there are black people that do good things and that they can get on as well as all the other white children. A black mountain cutting into the sky in the breeze of summer a black butterfly. I want to be a hydrologist so that I can study our nation's water supply. One of the underlying motives behind the school is the feeling that black children have to do so much better than whites to stand any chance at all in the jobs race. 
Jobs, of course, are a fundamental grievance of the black community. I want to be a hydrologist so that I can help our African nations store clean water for times of flood and drought. Earl Russell has a stake in the land, control over the space around him. But what of those others, the vast majority to whom the land is, at best, a hostile environment in which they simply exist? After the Bristol riots, David Lane, chairman of the Commission for Racial Equality, wrote in the Sunday Times, they feel the odds stacked against them from the start. Bad housing, poor schools, dreary surroundings, racial prejudice, few jobs. Their cycle is failure, frustration, despair. Seeing no hope and no future, they drift and drop out. Hey, Kurt. This feeling of not belonging, of not having a stake in the land, has contributed to a sense of rejection, a turning away from England and a turning toward Africa as the promised land, my land. This search for identity has its most distinctive expression in the Rastafarian movement. Rastafarians believe that the former emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, also known as Rastafari, was the black messiah. They believe that one day all black people exiled in lands ruled by white oppressors will return to Africa in a mass exodus. Rastafarians feel that they need space where they can practice their lifestyles unmolested. They see land as their most basic need, land to live on and to cultivate. Over here in England, your mum, your mum and dad we call you children, our child, our kid. Well in Jamaica we don't say child, our kid, we say pitney. Rastafarian Nigel Holmes frequently takes multiracial classes at a Reading primary school, teaching children about the culture of Africa and the West Indies. Which is your father, we used to say that in England. And we have such thing as fufu, which is, is food. It's a form of food of yam and cassava. The coming of Rastafarian to black people in the history of the West started by Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey was born in 1887 in St. Anne's, Jamaica. And not before him have any black man come and spoken such positive things to black people about their identity. Now, during his speech, after he came out of prison in America, I went back to Jamaica, and before he came to England, he said black people look to Africa for the crowning of a black king. That day your deliverance day will be near. After he passed away, His Majesty Yes Lassie I was crowned in the second November nineteen thirty. As Kings of King Lords of Lords. So his word actually come true. When you have land, life becomes much easier. Cause you have the land and you can plant your crop. Cause when I was in Jamaica, we had land and we never buy much food. We never buy food. So all what we eat, all we consume, right, came from the ground. We plant ourselves. So land is a very important thing to man. And it's like Gandhi did say, the herd provide for every man's need, but not for every man's greed. So land is a very important factor in man's life. And it's a necessity. I open space. I like animal. And so uh, I, I hardly, don't care what I do, I would have to do farming, whether here, Canada, New Zealand, Russia, any part of the world. The first thing I would want is a piece of land, because don't care how much money you have, you can spend it, but the land is always there. It's the greatest security for anybody. You don't want a hundred acre, three thousand acre. What the hell are you doing with so much land, one person? You only want what you can manage. Earl Russell is, so far as he knows, the only black farmer in England. He rents these 60 acres near Reading from his father-in-law, who happens to be white. But they give him a control over the space around him that is rare, if not unique, among West Indian immigrants. The farm means a lot for Okay. It's not easy, right? It's cold, it's wet, it's damp, it's everything. But 
Sometime I hold here till one o'clock, two o'clock. I call giving trouble for Kiafa. And I go in and... All right. That's, that's a victory, you know. Or if you lost one and see of the other one, you don't like it, but it's still a victory to me. And then, oh, there's nobody can tell me do this or else. What he meant or else you get your card, because I already have my card, right? And that's all you really have, your national insurance card. What else you own? Nothing. Everybody, uh, don't care how we go, but everybody can't own land. Everybody can't own a house. But that's the first thing you should have on the back of your brain. Just that little house, you know, that building plot. And then that make you feel like you're somebody, you got something. Huh? But well, if, you, if you're just moving in space, that's terrible, I think. The only thing I believe in, I don't got to run to the next person and ask him any big favor. And he don't have to ask me any. Eh? He may got 200 at a cackle, I got 50. So he's independent of me and I'm independent of him. The advantage I got over the the boys in Reading, or the boys in Nottingham, the boys in Birmingham. If I need a pound or a hundred pound, I can sell any one of these cow or any two of them. They are mine. The only thing I got to worry about is what I got to pay the tax man. Eh? And I never believe in owing the bank or anybody more than what I can pay. Well, it's like I said, back home, it's, it was 11 of us. We wasn't rich or we wasn't poor. We live comfortable. I can go back tomorrow morning and with the experience that I got here, I can live like a prince. See, I got one philosophy in life. Me first, right? Then my mother second, eh? and then my kids third, and then my wife fourth, and then anything me again. Eh? That's my way. You know why I always come first? If I don't look after me, I can't look after them. I was working in Basingstoke when they knocking down the whole town and build up the concrete jungle now. Then my mother-in-law died and uh, my father-in-law owned this farm and then he rented to us. Uh, and that's why I come to be here. I wouldn't fly on Concord if I even win the pools. I don't care how quick it reach you there. I don't really got any really ambition that I really want to got this or got that. Right? I don't say I couldn't do it a few more pounds. Right? But I'm quite happy. And that's all that counts. If you're contented within yourself, everything is all right, I think. These boys that got these here lock, you know, to me that's stupidness. They say 
they grow the bait through Hill Selassie. Oh, I'm sweating. But Hill Selassie used to cut his hair, dress decent, work, got money, ten times, a hundred times more than what I have. Huh? So the boys, them got to do the same. Cut off that rubbish what they call hair lock and live like a decent citizen <laughs> live like well not a decent citizen because none of us can ever be a decent citizen but live for suit yourself